Rwanda, and I work in the Department of Applied Physics of the um, Aerospace and Aeronautics School of the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, here in Madrid. So um, my, the title of my talk is somehow consistent because it's plasma, plasma flow diagnostic, and uh, I will make a practical approach. This means that I will try, this is a very complex subject, and I will try to avoid all mathematical complications. And what you your faces from this podium, I see that I get, most of the, many of you students maybe don't understand what we mean when we speak plasma or when we speak diagnostic. Diagnostic is different from the uh, medical term. So I spent my first five minutes of my talk just to fix the idea of what the, this what is the plasma, this is a particular state of condensed matter, and this will help that we will help you to understand what it will follow later. So this is a, this is a photograph of our laboratory, and to be practical, uh, I will, I will uh, illustrate uh, in our group we have theoretical models for plasma tractor. We work on uh, basically what is called electric probe or plasma diagnostics. Electric probe, I will explain what it means. But uh, to illustrate uh, my talk, I will use experimental results with a true uh, plasma thruster. This plasma thruster is shown here. And uh, this is the one of the vacuum tanks. And as you can see, this here we have an interface. This is inter this side is plasma exposure in the vacuum. This is a pressure meter. So uh, this will help us to understand what it means. Okay. What is uh, a plasma? So plasma is at the state of matter. Basically, we can define a plasma as a mixture of electron ion and neutral item that result from the partial ionization of a neutral gas. So this means that we have a mixture of electron ions and neutrons. And usually we work in uh, space conditions, this means high, uh, very low pressure. So uh, we need to characterize the physical properties of the plasma. This is the object of my talk. So the first approach, the first simple characteristic is to calculate the number of particles per cubic centimeter, the number of particles per volume. So we talk about the plasma density, mean number of ion per unit volume, number of electron per unit volume, or number of neutral items. So all this mixture is a fixture at a given temperature. But here, temperature is not what you measure with a thermometer. It's called a kinetic temperature in physics. This is a measure of the average kinetic, speed, uh, kinetic energy of the particles. So in this case, we create a, a very high a temperature means the particle moves with very high velocity. When the particle uh, decreases, this means we have lower particle velocity. So uh, you see also that the plasma is fully ionized when we have no particle, no neutral particle, or particle, partially ionized otherwise. Or partially ionized, sorry, otherwise. So um, in this, this is cemented in these two boxes, in which you, if you count the number, you have the only ion and electron, blue and red dot, and partially united, with this means that I added white dot, which is means neutral. So if you count the number of particles inside those boxes, the size of the boxes is typically this length, which is characteristic plasma length. I will not enter in the details. Then basically, I will say that this length is called the by length, means the mean average length that an electric field penetrates in the plasma. So if you count the number of dots in both boxes, blue and red, you will find that it's exactly equal. This means, in other words, that to get this material, this uh, medium, electrically neutral, we need to have the same density of electron and the same density of ion by unit volume. This means, if you remember your lecture in, uh, electric, uh, in physics, we go back to the Poisson equation. This means this difference is related with the charge density. When this difference is zero, this electric field is zero, so that in a plasma equilibrium, we have no electric field. This means also one important consequence has the, uh, the plasma potential is uniform in space. So uh, in this picture, you see the object in my talk. This blue means here is an argon plasma. And it's more or less an equilibrium. Let's say this word this way. And these two elements here, in particular, this, you see maybe this uh, black dot, 
as something that we use to measure this property of the plasma. Plasma diagnostic could be defined as the determination of the physical characteristics of plasmas by experimental method and do not, signify, do not significantly alter them. So this means that this probe, we call this probe because something we put into the volume of the plasma, it's plasma exposed, is used to determine this density, ion, this electron density, ion density, and also the temperature, the average kinetic energy of particles. So uh, how we produce a plasma? So uh, it's, uh, the equilibrium state of a plasma is usually in the textbook associated to high temperatures of matter because Quite simple, here we have an exchange, the free state of matter, and this is the classical exchange of equilibrium state of matter. We have here solid, liquid, gas. So just to fix this, let's say that we have here solid, liquid, or gas. You can think, just to fix ideas, that this is water. So solid state of water will be ice. For low temperature of the water, all the molecules, this, uh, Ice, ordinary ice, is an amorphous solid. This means the particle has not had random position. But the particle has no energy now to move. So they are a fixed position and they can only oscillate around equilibrium state. What we know is we increase a little bit the temperature of the system. This means we increase the mean velocity of the molecules. So the solid melts. The ice melts, isn't it? So it starts to be liquid. In liquid state, Still, the particles don't have very high energy, but they can move one with respect to the other. And this provides to the liquid state the uh, particular properties that we all know. But what we know is we still increase the, raise the temperature. If we raise the temperature, we get the water vaporized. Turns to be uh, gas, that is water vapor. In this case, all the particles move, move free instance, along the volume. But what could happen is we still increase more the temperature, raising more the, temp the average energy of the particle. We get another element. Two particles could collide one with the other, and they expel one electron. So one of the colliding particles could be ionized. In this case, when this ionization rate is high enough, we call this a plasma. So to have a plasma, we need to have a, a given uh, ionization rate. This is why in this diagram, this plasma state is placed on the far right for the high temperatures. But this is not exactly true because we can produce the ionization of particles in much other different ways. For example, using ultraviolet radiation uh, or using, as in the previous uh, talk, the uh, microwave collision, microwave to collide, make the particles collide and to produce the reaction of the ionization. So in practical grounds, uh, most plasma in nature are not in, uh, in an equilibrium state in the sense of your electron in thermodynamics because we need an external sort of energy to power this collision. So uh, just to tell you how many plasma we have in nature, well, we have a lot. A large part of uh, nature, or matter, matter in nature, is in plasma state. So I, this is why I show you this diagram, this is a very well-known diagram. What uh, we represent here? Here we represent, for example, ionosphere, plasma in the ionosphere, as in this corner, you see? And fusion, you, uh, has, uh, you heard about plasma fusion experiment, are over there, and the expected fusion reaction should work around this other point. So not all plasmas in nature and in the laboratory are within this box, but this box, you see this box, this cover, here is the density. Remember the density is the number of particles by cubic centimeter or by unit volume, which well, must be equal, number of electrons and number of ions. So it's from 0 to 25, but this axis is logarithmic. So this means that from 10 to 0 to 10 to 25. So the variation in density is huge. This other axis is the average temperature. Remember, this is the average kinetic energy of the particles. So this is seven order of magnitude. That's a lot. Uh, just to fix your idea again, I introduce here two points. What this uh, plasma we always measure the energies in a very special unit, which is called electron ball. Electron ball is the kinetic energy that an electron gains moving through the voltage drop of one volt. So uh, if you make this simple calculation, 
you will find that when the energy associated with one electron volt is about 11,600 degrees. So that's a lot. So what is the room temperature? Room temperature here is about 0 0.025 electron volts. So it's here in that line, vertical line. So I added in the diagram where is the ordinary water at uh, usual temperature and the air. So room water, it has about 10 to 22 particles per cubic centimeter, and uh, water is there has 10 to 19. You may see in your mind how different it is the property of the water and the property of the air. So you can per se somehow that here we have 25 order of magnitude. So the basic physics will be quite different from this corner of the, uh, of the diagram from this other corner of the diagram. You have to say this is the property of the general sphere. There are the property of low pressure plasmas, which is the light, you, some of the light, no. Yet maybe some of the light which you have in the room, and so on. So, uh, and how a plasma look like? So, there's a different, uh, different uh, actual photograph of plasmas. On the far left, we have the plasma we have around us in our everyday life since uh, the times of the beginning of the, of the uh, past century, when like uh, adverse men in the street make bright, uh, are made with bright light. For example, this one of a beer. So uh, here is the solar corona. Solar corona is uh, this here, the direct light of the sun is blocked by this uh, black uh, dot, like this. And this extension is about the of 100, in the order of 100,000 kilometers, which is the expansion of the plasma from the sun. Typical the energy for this expansion that came to a relativistic and came over there in about between four and eight minutes through the polar caps. It has an energy of 10, 100 electron volt and the density is 10 to nine particles per cubic centimeter. This, needs, this number could be very variable according to the particular situation. So uh, in, the space, in the fusion reactor, this is a photograph of an experiment in a fusion reactor inside. So this bright light inside is the plasma, closer to the walls of the reactors. Typically, fusion reactor has energies in the order of 10 to four electron volts. And the density is at about 10 to five. And the, the interest of this uh, space propulsion are that device over there that you already know. This is a grid ion thruster, and this is a uh, uh, Hall effect thruster. If we had properties not very far away from the uh, low pressure discharge because they are man produced plasmas. And the microscopic, the elementary processes that produce these plasmas are close to laboratory condition. So uh, after this introduction, I finally I would like to mention why it's so important the plasma physics from the point of view of aeronautics, because uh, here it is the represented the uh, properties of the ionosphere in a daylight a standard daylight. This is the number particle density in particle by cubic centimeters, and this is the altitude in kilometer. So the neutral gases are represented by these that's the lines, the concentration of neutral gases. And here we have the concentration, the complex concentration of particle, chemical particles around the air. The electron density is this red line. And this peak in particular is very important for uh, communication in the earth, but that makes the ionosphere uh, work like a, uh, like a mirror for radio communication. So this sphere is made, let's say, between 10 to 6 and 10 to 7 particle electron by cubic centimeter. So we have about 100,000 electrons in a cubic centimeter at a height of 200 kilometers. So our idea that the space is empty is not too, it's not too, it's not exactly true. This complex uh, structure of the ionosphere is not the subject of my talk. And uh, I will not concentrate on plasma. So, now, what is the subject of my talk? My subject of my talk is to the ways to introduce to you how we characterize the properties of these plasmas that I see from the plasma thrusters. So all this have the three more, more widely uh, known uh, plasma thrusters is a hard effect, 
Greater Ryan and Jim, it is the highly efficient multi-tech plasma thruster, the CAM. All that share the same, uh, the same elements, for all, of, all have a hollow cathode here, used for uh, uh, neutralization and primary ionization of the gas, and here we have a plasma plume. So this, you remember, all the speaker has underlined that from the point of view of a plasma thruster, the better the, uh, the velocity of the ion along a given direction, the faster the ion moves, the better for the performance of the, of the thrusters. This means that this improves the transfer of momentum between the plasma, the plasma flow, the thruster, and the plasma flow. So uh, this is, has an important consequences. As we have heard in the PPU, we are talking about acceleration voltage of about two kilovolts. So this means that this ion has a very large velocity along the direction. And if you calculate this, the velocity corresponding of an ion of two kilovolts accelerated and the voltage difference, two kilovolts is a lot. So this plasma has a particular property. They are called mesothermal plasma flow. In my talk, I boxed some basic idea to help you to follow the argument. What is a mesothermal plasma flow? This means that the velocity of the ions along this direction is much higher than the average velocity of the, of the ion, the thermal velocity of the ions. Because random numbers in the, number in the, in the ambient plasma move, but a much lower speed. And this drift, this drift velocity of ions is much smaller than the thermal velocity of electrons. This means that electrons are also moving at random speed, but electrons are much lighter, so they move faster. So uh, the structure of this plasma plume, this is also plasma plume, the plasma thruster X out, has a very complex structure. You have to see, uh, I introduced here a couple of diagrams. Uh, in this plasma plume, you can identify this area in yellow, where the concentration of neutral gas is more important because uh, plasma expands, the neutral expand as they exit from the uh, thruster. Thrusters don't produce the 100% of ionization of the neutral gas we inject. So we have a efficiency in the utilization of the propellant. New usually is below 50%. So we have a lot of neutral here. This low nectar produced elementary processes here which correspond to collision between neutrons and ions, but the plasma expands over there. So we have a different regime, and I will enter in the details because most other other speakers will do, I hope. So, uh, but you can understand what is the problem now of measuring properties of this plasma flow. I mentioned this is a mesothermal plasma, okay? So this means you have all the ions in this plasma flow have very large velocity along one given direction. If I introduce one obstacle on any, any body inside this flow, we will get a wake, a wake uh, similar to what a uh, sailing boat, in which, but in the plasma we have an additional difficulty. This additional difficulty is we have electric field because we are talking about charged particle. So when a rare fraction occurs, this means we create electric field at the back. So this is why I will not explain this in detail, that we have a void region. So when I introduce some element to measure the plasma, as those elements you saw in the first picture, I need to take it account the structure around the wake. So what is an electric probe? Electric probes are uh, easy to implement, but unfortunately very hard to, uh, to uh, interpret the result. Why? Uh, are, you can define it as a machine device made of one or more electric electrodes, then collect or emit a current or target particles from the plasma as a function of the bias polarization. This means irrespective of the structure, we have an element that is biased with a voltage. <coughs> this voltage means I collect particles from the plasma, or we collect and or emit particles. At the end, what we get is a current from different polarization voltage of this electrode. So this is why the plasma property that obtained from this current voltage curve, this is the, what we get from the probe. This is very easy to implement, but very difficult to understand because we need to relate the physical model of the plasma with the properties with this current. So mathematics is complex, and mathematics is what I promise to avoid in my lectures. Next, uh, I will show you three very well-known uh, diagnostic. We call diagnostic because we put something inside, a prop, and we diagnose the plasma. 
Uh, what are the relevant parameters? One of them, we already know, is the number of charged particles by cubic uh, per unit volume. Another one will be what? If we have charged particle, we know we can have an electric field, an electrical uh, plasma potential profile. And uh, we also have the, key, the, the holy grail of uh, plasma torture is the velocity of the ion. We would like the big velocity of the ion to be the, best, the, the largest possible. This is the ion drift speed. So ion drift speed and energy spectrum of ions is measured with the retarded fuel uh, energy analyzer. Plasma potential is measured with another diagnostic called electric probe, uh, emission probe, sorry. And the electron energy distribution function could be determined with the oldest diagnostic of plasmas called Lambda probe. So I will refer to the result, and I will illustrate the result of a plasma flow with experimental measurement from our laboratory. So uh, if we would like to explore the uh, properties of the plasma plume, we need one advantage of the electric probe is they allow point-wise measurement. That means we can't have measurement at a given point of the space. So to get a characterization of all the flow in a stationary condition, we need to move the probe along the plasma plume. So uh, we developed this computer control at the stand in which we have three different diagnostics. This is the language probe. This is the emission probe. And this one is the uh, uh, retarded field energy analyzer. We have the still room for another diagnostic we are uh, developing by now. So we can display this in front of the plasma thruster along 35 millimeters, uh, 3500 millimeters, 3150 millimeters. This is 35 centimeters. This is a lot in the plasma. And uh, we can also move along the EA and X direction. This is in the two perpendicular direction, about uh, 150 millimeters. So uh, next we will uh, next we will see you also that. To obtain a good characterization of the plasma, we need a combination of different diagnostics. So this is the Lambert probe. The Lambert probe, in our case, is this bowl over there. Or this simple uh, wire is the, oldest, uh, is the oldest diagnostic used in plasma physics that came from the 20s of the past, uh, past uh, century. This is the Lambert probe, a plasma positive electrode with a well-defined geometry that electric can be asked to correct electron anions. This means this probe or this probe is inserted in the plasma, as in the first uh, picture, and we bias the metallic surface with an external power supply to measure the current. This is the characteristic, the typical characteristic we obtain. This is the potential of the probe, and this is the probe current. And this vertical uh, dotted line make a separation between two different regimes. On the right, is over the plasma potential, so all electrons are attracted and ion rejected. On the left, ion is attracted and electron rejected. We have two, very, uh, two limits. Here in the point A, all the electrons are repelled because we have made the probe very, very negative with respect to the local plasma potential. On the right, all the electrons are attracted because all electrons are, uh, electron are, 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 <laughs> sorry, are attracted and ion repelled. So uh, the difference in Hegg is because basically of the mass of the different particles. Ion that mass massive, and this is why this current is lower, and this current is higher because electron can move very fast. The part, interesting part of the curve is this way, is the side between B and C. I cannot avoid to show you this picture because from the point of view of physical plasma, it's very attractive. Uh, this is the same problem like that. But we bias here is very negative. So what happened if we have a very negative electrode in the plasma? And this is what happened in the previous talk when we have a high voltage in the, in the, uh, in the PPU, in some elements of the PPU, because these are track electrons. And uh, this in, case, in this case, the pressure was not very high, was not very low. So all electron attracted toward the probe hit the neutral gas around. So this is why produce this white, this bright, this bright around the probe that looked like a Jedi sword, but this, uh, 
And this is produced by a drag emission by electrons that hit the atoms around. This is a visual representation of what is called a plasma sheet, in which all electrons form some kind of structure around a very uh, positive, highly positive probe. So unfortunately, this is not very practical to uh, diagnose uh, the plasma. The theory said, classical theory said, that we can calculate the plasma potential, the electron density, remember, number of electrons by unit volume, and uh, electron temperature, that means kinetic energy of electron, remember, by simple analysis in the case of this plasma is what is called a Maxwellian. This means not drifting. This is not the case of our plasma plumes. So simply we represent this in semi-log, and uh, electron temperature can be obtained from this slope. This gives you the density, and this will be you the plasma potential. So why this man is talking about a useless, introducing a useless uh, diagnostic? Not too much. Because uh, this is very glamour proof, also works almost in all conditions, even in non McWilliam plasma, and permit to determine the electron energy distribution function. This is a key and a key parameter <coughs> of plasma. We need to assume something. This is why we use the, the, the spherical probe, because we would like to have isotropy. Here, uh, remember when I draw the, in the drawing, the sphere was received the plasma flow in one direction, so ions are not important for the plasma flow, or the, uh, uh, for the lamy probe, uh, but electrons are important. So in the case we have, this is, I, I must say this, I'm sorry, I promise not to talk about mathematics, but I must say this. This is the main free path for collisions in the plasma, so we need that two collisions, the this free path between two successive collisions to be much more longer than the size of the probe. And also, we need that the size of the probe to have a seat and a device length much smaller than the size of the probe. This is basically because we would like that this sheet, plasma sheet around the body, to be very, very thin and attached to the probe. So in this case, we can neglect what is part behind. So uh, in this case, it's not difficult to show that the electron energy distribution function is proportional to the second derivative of the curve I show you. But we need an additional hint. This additional hint is a measure, independent measure of the plasma potential. So I show you here some result obtained in the flow, in the plasma flow using the Lambert probe. Here it represented the electron velocity distribution function, in, sorry, it's not true, it's electron energy distribution function. Remember we have isotropy. And uh, here it represented the electron energy. And here is waterfall displayed all the electron energy spectra along the actual direction in millimeters. The engine is uh, located uh, here at zero, at, uh, at theta zero. So in close to the engine, we found two different electron populations. We have two maximum, this represents, sorry, the number of ions, uh, electrons with a given energy. Hmm? This is an a statistic, an histogram of the electron energy. So here we have the two group of ions, of electrons, and what we see, we see is that high energy electrons uh, that has a maximum energy at, at, at the top of 50 electron volts, met with the low energy peak as we progress far away from the ion engine. This is called a thermalization, thermalization process, and has very consequences, because this means that electrons are somehow sharing the energy. So, to obtain these curves, we need heat. The heat is the value of the plasma potential. So, this brings me to introduce you the second diagnostic, the second electric probe. The second electric probe is the emission probe. They are only used to determine the plasma potential. This is very important, because in a plasma, remember, we can have electric fields. So electric fields, when we determine the electric field as a function of the distance, we, sorry, the plasma potential as a function of the distance, we determine the value of the electric field that drives the particle here or there. So uh, the principle is always the same. And then the diagnostic is complete. It's, this is the diagram, so this schematic shows the principle. Uh, we have a collecting probe, right? The collecting probe could be a wire. Okay, we bend the wire. 
and we will hit the wire with a DC or somehow a current, an electric current. So the temperature of this wire will rise. In the case that the temperature is over typically 2,000 degrees, this wire turns to be an electron emitter. So we have two kind of electrons to go to the wire. At the right, we have blue electrons here. This blue electron came from the plasma. And we also have, at the left, uh, red electrons. Electrons are emitted by the probe. So when we bias this probe with respect to the plasma, we have two situations. At the right, when we are over the plasma potential, with the bias the probe over the plasma potential, all the electrons are attracted. And the probe do not emit any, any electron anyway, because the electron cannot escape. At the left, all the electrons are repellent. So we have two contributions of electrons. Electrons from the plasma are repellent, but also all electrons emitted by the probe are emitted to the plasma. This transition from electron collection to electron emission is very abrupt, and cool also gives you a help, a help toward the determination of the plasma potential. Here at the right is our emission probe. This is the wire. This has 5.4 millimeter in the, uh, uh, mass. It's an electrical insulator mass made of alumina that supports the wire. It needs to be electrical insulator. Uh, this other one, I picked this picture from the, from the internet. This is here the wire, the heater wire, and this is the support sub. It's in a different shape, but the principle is the same. And to see one thing really sophisticated that this is extracted, the principle is again the same. This uh, is just an infusion experiment. Uh, we have here an optical fiber. Here we have a laser beam, an infrared laser, that focus over a small tip of exaborate lantern crystal, the tip of the probe, to heat it. So it's electrically connected and the same is the, the principle is the same. They do this to avoid the voltage drop by the, heat, by the, electric, uh, by the power supply, the heating power supply allows, along the, the wire. So uh, this is just in plasma, all this diagnostic is just in plasma, in particular in plasma in diagnostics of plasma uh, thrusters. And I included here some few key references if you would like to uh, see the filter. Well, how, how this probe works, it, it, it can be, it's clearly seen in this diagram. This is again, remember, current voltage. And uh, on, on green, the green curve is the purely collecting probe. This is, the, the, is in this case, this wire, when it's cold, act as a purely collecting probe. In the red curve, represent the emission characteristic. On the right, there is no emission when we are at the far of the plasma, emission characteristic in vacuum. At the far right, there is no emission characteristic because plasma are not emitted. At the far left, all electrons emitted by the probe should jump to the plasma. If we add these two characteristics, we obtain the blue curve. The blue curve. So this result in an enhancement, in a, in, in a higher uh, current here, and the slope in this area became much, the curve became much stepper. So this transition helped us to determine where is the plasma potential. On the right, there is actual measurement with the, uh, an MSI probe. Here is the same characteristic as the blue one, and you can see we need to hit the wire. As the, there is no electron emission at the far right here because all electrons remain in the probe, electrons from the plasma, and electrons, uh, thermionic electrons. And are we, uh, um, are we uh, by the probe more uh, past the plasma potential, at lower potential, this cur electron current helps with uh, the emission electron current increases with the, uh, with the temperature of the wire and makes this current higher and higher and higher. The interesting side is here because this plasma potential should be over there in this experiment. And there is two basic techniques to determine this point. I will not talk about in detail. Is the, one is the floating potential of the emission probe. This means, as you see, the floating potential is the zero current potential. <coughs> so you see how this point moves to the far right. So at the given point, we will cross the, electron, the plasma potential. And the other one is more involved is the inflecting point method. In the flecting point method, uh, the plasma potential is assigned to the, uh, to the, uh, 
to the uh, point of maximum uh, maximum slope of this curve. So what we get with this is simple. We obtain here the plasma potential as a function of the distance. To surprise to everybody, here is the, the plasma. This is not an important electric field. You see there is only 25 volts, 30, 25 volts, or different, 30 volts. So this means that the local electric field do not, cannot drive the ions. They, uh, the ion has energy in the order of 400 electron volts, 500 electron volts. So this electric field don't, can explain the motion of ion, which are centrally driven by the acceleration imparted by the thrust, by the thruster. So next. And finally, we need to uh, determine the holy grail, which is the velocity of the ions. This element here is called a retarding field energy analyzer, and is a really much involved element. This, uh, in this configuration, there are many configurations possible. In this one, we measure centrally the velocity of the ion or kinetic energy of the ion in one dimension when the ions are parallel to the axis of symmetry of this uh, cylinder. It's much more involved because inside we have uh, four different grid configurations. This is one grid, two grids, three grids, four grids. And at the back, the current of ions is measured at the back here in the ion collector plate. So uh, this works in this way. We call the first grid floating grid because it's connected to nothing. So if you're not connecting to nothing to allow electrically the grid to float to introduce the minimum perturbation in the plasma. So this electric grid is that. So plasma that are right at this point are, it's hard to say, they but as little inter, uh, perturbation as possible. So in the, first, in the first space between two grids, we have a corner of electron and a corner of ions. But they pass through the whole of the grid. Later here, is the plasma electron repeller. So this uh, grid is biased negatively, so all the, uh, all the electrons are turned back. So only ion pass through the third space. And here is, uh, here is the ion discriminator. This grid is biased, it's swept with a potential. Remember, we always measure one current for different potential. So this is sweep. So only ions with energy this energy is in the grid, filters ion because only ion with kinetic energy of the nonsense could pass through. Otherwise, they are rejected. Low energy ion are rejected. And finally, here is the ion collector plate. We have a filter, uh, filter uh, grid, which is called a secondary electron suppressor. Unfortunately, nature is difficult. And as happened with the PPU, and we explained in the previous lecture, when a higher energy ion, let's say a 400 electron volt ion, hits a metal, there is a property, it's a material property that gives us a, a chance to re emit an electron. So this electron is re emitted, needs to be returned back. This is why we have this, uh, this secondary uh, electron suppressor, to suppress secondary electrons. So now, this is the current that we measure at the back plate. This is the current density, in fact. This is the velocity, so we collect in the, in the back plate all the ions over with velocities over the sunset, and this sunset is related with the ion discriminator voltage. It's not difficult to show that the derivative of this current gives you also the ion energy distribution function. Remember, this is statistic that says how much ion we have with this, in, within this energy interval. So these are actual measurements of the anion flow. What we find is one thermal peak, we call this thermal peak, which is the ambient plasma ions. There is a random motion of plasma of ions that has the velocity a low energy ion in the direction of the collector. So this from this low peak. And this is the high energy peak that came from the thruster. Because even in this case, many ions arrive to the detector. This is the original, uh, the original <coughs> experimental point are, are here represented by the blue dot. We have an approximation curve and the, uh, ion, the electron en ion energy distribution factor is obtained by the phase of this curve. But moreover, we can determine what is the energy the temperature of the wire of the ions measuring the width of the peak. This is an approximation. We assume that this piece is more or less Gaussian, and we measure the thickness. What means this thickness? Thick thickness means the average 
dispersion of the ion velocity around the mean velocity. So with this, this is our supplemental result along the axis. On the left, the water file displayed characteristic. This is current, ion current. Again, it's the distance for different ion energies. And this is the ion energy distribution function as a function of the velocity. Here we have the two maximum, but now it has our water for display it. On the far, at the back, is closer to the engine, so we have higher density of ion there. There is much more ion close to the engine, and we go further, we, uh, we go further in, the, in the axis. This means the density ion density decreases, and also this, uh, this is the accelerated peak with an average temperature in this case of about 50 kilometer by second. The, in this case, uh, here we represented the uh, maximum of this peak as a function of the distance. So you can see that the maximum has always the same energy. This means we don't have energy thermalization mechanism for the ions. Ion pass through like a cannonball, cannot be stopped. And this, means is, this is the uh, average, the temperature that measures the thickness of this peak. The reason why this, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this uh, density decreases is because somehow the ion expands. So at a given point, the density of ion should decrease within a cone dictated by the expansion of the ion beam. So uh, this is uh, ions in a ter mesothermal plasma flow because the velocity of these driven energized ions is much higher than the thickness of the uh, thermal ion beam. This is the characteristic, remember, of a mesothermal plasma flow. Ion drift much higher than the uh, ion uh, thermal speed. So this is just to conclude. Uh, plasma flows, I showed you how uh, one can detect the property of plasma flow. In the laboratory, we know we are also measuring the axial direction and also in the plane in the J and X direction too, to determine the collimation of the beam, which is another important parameter. And uh, electric probe has the advantage to be easy to implement, but very hard to interpret it, because uh, the physics behind this result are quite complex. So I think that is all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for this interesting talk of plasma physics and diagnostics. Uh, there is any question in the audience? Is there any question? Well, I, I have uh, a couple of questions. So, um, did you did you have the opportunity to look at the charge exchange ions in the in the backflow region, or is something that never interested you? In the backflow. Yeah, no, not all the charge exchange ions going there, but the charge exchange ions coming back. Well, it's uh, it, it's really a kind of modification of the present platform because uh, the the way to do this will be to introduce another uh, another ions detector, but turn it 90 degrees with respect to the to the flow. So it, it's something we have in mind to measure not only the 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 component, the parallel component of the flow, but the perpendicular. So turn it this, maybe as we display the 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 platform we can have one other detector looking at, looking at the back, or no. 90 degrees. But uh, presently, we have now to, to, to determine an, another very important parameter, which is the, the, um, the ion beam collimation, because we noticed that in our case, ion beam collimation is very good. This means all the ion density drops along the x or j direction, which is perpendicular to the axial direction, in, let's say, a few centimeters. So, um, but yes, in principle, we, we, we can do it. No, because we, uh, at ISA, we were in a smart one. We had uh, the plasma diagnostic package just in the backflow of the thruster, yes. and we were measuring the charge exchange ions and the backflow, and, and we discovered that uh, these ions, they, they, they were quite energetic. Well, no, not quite energetic, but it was like 20 electron volts that already is enough to erode, for example, aluminum. 
So yeah. there is now a lot of interest. This morning I didn't have time because my presentation was too long <laughs> to speak about one important thing, which is the spacecraft thruster interaction. Is when you have, a, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the, in the spacecraft electric proportion, everything is very close, so you can have problems and you have to measure the effort. Eh? So uh, we are very interested. The telecommunication companies like Airbus, Thales, they are very interested yeah. in all this spacecraft thruster interaction, and and the backflow is is a is a region that. It's difficult to measure because you have also a lot of things coming from the chamber. Yeah. But you think with your device you could? Uh... Uh, yes. Well, uh, what I, I think I, I, I did not mention many things. <laughs> we had to do with the characteristic length and the mean free path for uh, the, partic the particular collisional regimes. Or not. In our case, in 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 the in the in the dimension, the mass flow rate is about two or three orders of magnitude of what we are using. So uh, close to the to the uh, exit section of the engine must be a lot of neutral. Neutral, neutral means uh, uh, that the backflow affect because of the charge exchange collision and electric collision of uh, neutrals. But in principle, we can. But it's, it should be. I need to study. It. It's, just, it's, it's not so easy. Is there any question? Yes, please. Um, yeah, my question is, you know, one of the techniques in order to ionize the atoms and then eventually create a plasma is using RF generator, an RF source. What? RF source. I? RF. Radio frequency. Yeah, Radio frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Radio frequency, microwaves. Yes. Yeah, microwave, okay. Then the question is, how the uh, RF frequency and the R, how the RF power is influencing the property of the plasma? That, that, that's, a long, that's, a long, that's complicated because uh, first, to, uh, to, to, for the public, to ionize uh, with ra uh, radio frequency, this means we have electrons, electrons are mounted in the microwave, so they hit the neutrals. Because the, the, uh, the microwave, needs, uh, the, 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 in the collision, the energy of the neutral, the electron, needs to be over the ionization. Uh, so this means that you need to power the electron with a high uh, density. <coughs> With a, high, uh, with a high power. So, uh, and also, in order to have a collision, the mean free path needs to be well below the uh, electrons. So this means you are working with high pressures. You see, the microwave will drop down fast about one uh, three millitor, one, uh, one ten to minus one millitor, uh, or point one millitor. So, uh, to ionize with this, you need a collision. And um, the power, the uh, there is a, there exists the, the energy of the energy of the the energy of the the average energy of the ejected electrons depend, of course, of the of the energy of the of the mean power applied. So this is why usually the temperature of the microwave plasma are much higher than what I mentioned when I talk about the charges. Hmm? So it's typically about five, seven electron volts. But uh, this depends on how the electron is produced and how is the, the particular characteristic of the collision and mechanism that produce the electrons. Because the, the electron is, the, the energy the electron hit the atom and extract one electron from the external shell. So according to the particular collision, the extracted electron has a, a given a determined uh, energy spectrum which depends on the neutral of the spectrum and how the electron is extracted, how the collision is produced. It's a bit uh, higher temperature, uh, average temperature, but I cannot uh, tell you now if there is, what is the dependence? Is there, a, is there any question, more questions? No? Okay, we thank the speaker.